People power growth, but recruiting and onboarding are expensive, exhausting, and absolutely overwhelming. I've been there and it doesn't have to be this way. Welcome to Hire and Empower. I'm your host, Molly McGrath. Join me as we interview leaders who care about their teams and distill powerful lessons from them. This show is sponsored by H&E, helping organizations to find their best hire and empower them for success. Learn more at hiringandempowering.com. All right, team, we are have another uh, special guest for you today. Um, Christian, hi, thank you for being with us again. Great to be here. Thank you so much, Molly. Yes, absolutely. So you have at the, by this point, if you haven't, I'm going to really highly recommend that you go back and listen to Christian Hansen. We had him, um, air date of March 8th, 2022, uh, the influence mindset, the art and science of getting people to choose you go back and listen to that podcast. I have sent it to so many people and got feedback, even before it launched, even before it went live. And I've gotten so much feedback because during my coaching calls, I the conversation would come up around sales intake, things of that nature. And I just could, I'm like, here's a raw unedited version. Take a listen to this right now because I couldn't even duplicate that conversation. And I have to tell you, since that podcast, what has been coming up over and over and over again. And I would love for you to just kind of speak into this again. I cannot get out of my mind that you said in regards to that people have it wrong. They want to handle the problem and they want to go right to the solution. And the goal is that, and tell me if I'm butchering this a little bit, but it just the premise of it really stuck out with me is that you have to resolve the emotions first and foremost. Did I get that right? Yes. No. When, whenever you are, um, you know, meeting somebody and they're coming in with a problem, you, you got to always remember that a problem is not a problem until someone feels something. And so that's, the, like I said, it's the, the, the emotion is the spear tip, uh, you know, what, what's kind of driving them. And once you resolve that, then you have solved, you know, uh, the, you're going to help them feel validated and that they're, they're there for, they're getting the right peace of mind and, and they're going to feel a lot more comfortable. And, and most importantly is that when you resolve emotions effectively, you are setting them up to becoming a referral all-star because, you know, how many times have you worked with somebody who they solved your problem, right? But they didn't mm-hmm. really make you feel great, Right. Um, but how many times have you worked with somebody who not only solved your problem, but made you feel a whole lot better because of it? And, uh, who are you most likely to refer someone that just solved your problem or someone who provided a fantastic customer experience that you just, it was unparalleled. Uh, and I know I've had those experiences. And so when you resolve an emotion and solve their problem at the same time, you've just set the stage for them to be a a referral source for the rest of their life. Mm. And go back. I'm going to put it in the show notes again. If you did not get a copy, I'm going to highly recommend you go to Amazon and get a copy of Christian Hansen's book, The Influence Mindset, The Art and Science of Getting People to Choose You. And it is a phenomenal, I have this thing dog-eared. I have sticky notes on it. I have highlighters on it. I have pages that are flipped over. It's just a phenomenal book that um, our, our dear friend, Christian Victoria Collier had recommended to me. And I was speaking with her on Saturday and she's like, I have a dog ear too. I absolutely love that book. <laughs> so bravo. Thank you for getting this message out here. And I'm excited to bring it to the legal space because as you and I've had so many conversations about there needs to be, and I'm starting to see this, but it, there needs to be a groundswell in regards to a mind shift in the legal space uh, in regards to how they are uh, communicating how in their intake calls in the conference rooms, in addition to even with how to build a business for growth. And what do you need in regards? You need your people, your process, your production to ultimately point to that profitability. And that's what we're talking about today is 
really, hopefully you get a pen and paper and walk out of here with a mindset shift in regards to creating the long-term employee you want. Why is Christian here? Well, Christian, I love at the end of our podcast, the last one you had shared with me another side of your coaching practice that you're very passionate about in regards to supporting um, college age children. And I think it absolutely positively resonates within hiring employees in your business. So tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. So, you know, as I mentioned, I, I started my career in higher education. Um, I just love working in the space, helping young adults capture vision for their life and then harness that vision and put it into action so that they have a life of purpose, a life of meaning, and they're able to go out and, and just do what they want to do. And a huge part of that, again, as I've reviewed and interviewed thousands and thousands of candidates uh, in my roles in undergrad admissions, graduate admissions, and corporate HR, uh, you know, I, I realized that people are really good at answering the common set of problems, uh, common set of questions. But the problem is, is that I, I really think that the, the most common questions that people are asking uh, are not the most effective ones, you know, and I, and I talk about this in, in my book, The Influence Mindset, you know, for example, you know, we always ask, well, what are you passionate about, right? And, and I really think that when we ask students, you know, well, what are you passionate about? That really, it doesn't really set them up for success. Or even when you ask students, well, what do you want to do when you grow up? Um, again, I, I don't think that that's a very effective question because students are not literate in careers whether they're in high school or in college. They're just gaining literacy in that. And so instead of what are you passionate about or what career do you want to do? The question that I, I, I talk about, and again, I address this in my book is, well, what's, what is the problem you're passionate about solving? And when we change that discussion, not only in the hearts of young people, uh, but also in college grads and also people going to grad school and even people trying to switch jobs, when you change the discussion from this is what I'm passionate about to here is the problem that I'm really passionate about solving, that just opens up a completely different level of conversation that I think creates more opportunities and makes people stand out even more. So I mean, that's just one, one example. And I, and I work with students and, and college grads and career seekers uh, as I coach people trying to switch careers as well. Uh, the, the answering this basic question uh, really changes the game. And so tell us a little bit about how you see that this really correlates of creating a long-term employee you want where the the same path plan structure that you use with helping people. Um, Cause you know, that's the number one question I hear in regards to interviews. And it's so crazy because it, in the interview, the attorneys will ask the candidates, well, where do you see yourself in five years? What, and if their answer is not so pristine and crisp, they go to Storyland and make up all these stories about, well, they're not committed, that eventually they want to hang their own shingle, eventually they want to yada, yada, yada. And I would assert, and you see that people don't traditionally have that level of clarity, no. in, first and foremost, and how it's up to us to reframe the question, to your point. You get these standard questions that are so outdated of what do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah, no, I, I think especially in the hiring process, uh, entrepreneurs, especially, uh, you know, lawyers running their own practice, there is huge opportunities uh, for them to build and strengthen an impression and build a relationship with a prospective hire that is going to shape you know, the time that they're working for you. And what I mean by that is, um, what if, you know, instead of, okay, so when, when you have applicants who are applying to these jobs, they're thinking that there's this huge power differential, that the interviewer, the prospective employer, has all the control and all the power. And so, uh, and so when an applicant goes into these situations, they're not expecting to get 
you know, any, you know, relationship development or anything, you know, like that. Um, but what if you created your hiring experience to be a brand experience that starts building the relationship off, you know, from the, you know, from, from day one. Now, what I mean by that is, um, yes, they want to work at your job. They want to work at your, your business. That's why they're applying. But what if you, as the person interviewing them, takes the opportunity to sell the applicant even more on why they would want to work with you or your organization? And so that comes down to, uh, again, this concept of passion versus a problem. How many times have uh, you know you gone over websites and, and they say, well, we're just really passionate about this or passionate about that? Well, that's that's fine, but what if in an interview experience the interviewer is like, let me tell you uh, a little bit more about us, and you know, not only are we passionate about this, but we are really passionate about solving these problems. These are the problems. These are the uh, people focus, the people-centered problems that we're really passionate about solving. What do you think about that? All of a sudden, you have stated your mission, stated your purpose in a way that shows that you are mission-driven as an organization. And then you are getting their buy-in from the moment, from the beginning of the interview. That starts to build a relationship and a vision uh, that, you know, you that when they are at the, there's the greatest discrepancy in power differential here, and you are able to reach out and connect with them on that human level, you've just started to build a really powerful relationship uh, with a perspective, a new oncoming employee that they're buying in when they're most impression, most impressionable about your company. So that, that's just like one idea of how you can put that into practice. Well, in, in this market, it's insane, especially in the legal space. Unemployment's under 1% right now. And candidates are interviewing law firms more. The days of you should be lucky to have a job are over. And when people, I say to them, tell me why you're looking to leave. They always say, oh, I'm looking for a better opportunity. Well, tell me what that means. Where are you not seeing opportunity where you currently are? Again, you have to ask powerful questions, deeper level questions, shift your questions as Christian has pointed out for us. And it always comes down to, I'm not getting the time, the attention, the feedback and the mentorship. Well, when I say that to my attorneys, like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want anyone coming here. I'm not a mentor. I, I don't want them coming here and thinking that I'm going to coach and mentor them just to train them to leave me. And that's where their mind goes immediately. And in this day and age, to your point, that's part of your branding is you really do need to shift your mindset that you do need people who people want to be somewhere where they have a mentor or a leader or a coach with that mindset in there, regardless if they have the skills and knowledge, the, you know, legal ease, so to speak, whatever you're looking for, but they are 100% looking for a place. So they might use the word mentorship and it might mean something different to you as an entrepreneur or attorney, like, oh, I'm not going to pay to coach and lead you and mentor you. That's what I hear, Christian. And for them, I believe, because when I keep breaking it down and breaking down, well, what does mentorship look like for you? Well, somebody that has a true north that really will share with us what the vision is of the company, what the mission, mission is of the company, and then where we fit in, what seat we're sitting in on the proverbial bus for that, and how we can be part of that, because they really do want to be part of something. Human beings want to make impact. They want to be difference making. They don't want to just come in and put their head down, shut their mouth and collect their paycheck and go home at five o'clock anymore. They don't, no matter what stories you have about millennials or anyone else, and this is what I hear from them, Christian. And from my perspective, like, I'm like, well, that's, that's mentorship. Yes. But that's really also you looking for leadership. You want a leader who's leading leaders, right? Absolutely. Well, you know, it, it's interesting. Um, just a couple of thoughts on what you just said. Uh, you know, I always talk about how the, the mark of true leadership is not the ability 
to solve problems. It's the ability to identify problems that no one else can see. And when you are able to position yourself as a leader with a strategic vision, then all of a sudden people are going to look to you as, okay, this is a person that I want to work with because we value, we are statistically more likely to value strategic thinking skills over any other skill set. Um, and so again, as, how do you communicate this with, you know, early on hires or in the you know, application process? When you talk about, again, your vision as a strategic thinker and when, it, when an, uh, an intern comes in or someone they're interviewing and you're able to change, take that extra five minutes in an interview and, you know, change their perspective, change their paradigm a little bit, show them what the world really looks like then they're going to be like, wow, this is, this is an amazing opportunity. I, people want to have paradigm shifts. Similar when you have new employees, if you take just a few minutes and help them look at a bigger picture, help them gain a new strategic vantage point, then they are going to see you as someone who is going to uh, really help open doors and take you know, they're, they're, they're going to want to stay because they want to feel connected as, because the more you change their paradigms, the more they're going to be, you know, connected to you. The, the other thing is speaking to, to mentorship, mentorship is the new leadership. Um, and, you know, there, there's an interesting study that said that um, for college graduates, only one in five have a sense of what their purpose is. And that statistic doesn't get much better for the workforce. That's uh, 30% of employers, or excuse me, employees have a, a purpose-driven focus in their careers. And when you take the time to mentor uh, and, and to really help someone develop their skills, they're gonna be indebted to you and they're gonna feel even more connected and they're gonna to want to really stay and learn more. So all of these things boils down to a key point. People leave when they feel like they have no more value to gain or if they feel like they're gonna uh, you know, get a better opportunity somewhere. Opportunity isn't always a better paycheck. Um, it can be the opportunity to you know, learn something new, get a new uh, uh, skill set, maybe even have leadership opportunity. But one of the really low hanging fruit that I think any employer can really take advantage of in the form of mentorship is taking the time to change paradigms for young and new employees. Because when you do that, they're going to be like, wow, I'm getting value here by learning to see the world in a more strategic way. And that's going to be really beneficial. Uh, and I want to stay and learn more and more and more. And when you are able to think and show that strategically through strategic mentorship, boy, that, that really goes a long way. And the other, the other place that that can happen, again, is in the hiring process. I can't tell you the amount of times when I, when I worked for uh, you know high-level MBA program, um, I'd have these applicants coming in. And again, they're expecting that really high power differential where they have zero power and I have all the power, right? And, but when I took the time to kind of pause the interview, you know, I got to know them a little bit and I did, and I gave them some coaching where I was just a little bit, you know, candid with them and gave them some ideas or uh, brainstorm with them. The amount of times I got the comment, no other school would even give us this type of attention or help. Uh, that really made them more inclined to choose our university. Uh, because I was the face of that. And they said, boy, you are really modeling the degree of development that I can really gain um, at this institution. And that is when their loyalty really began. And to this day, the students that, you know, I, <laughs> so, you know, some of them came to our program, some of them did not, but I still am in touch with them because they see me as a strategic mentor for them. And they come back to me again and again. Uh, and we have developed this relationship. So in some ways, again, your interview experience, when you onboard these new employees, this is a brand experience that you are providing. Uh, it's not just figuring things out and learning you know, more about this applicant, whether or not they're a good fit, but your interview process and your onboarding process is a brand experience that they're going to either continue and share with others or they're not going to be inspired by it and they're going to start looking for options elsewhere. 
I can't tell you how, what you just said was phenomenal because most people don't know what their purpose is, their passion. You have the stats, you just laid it out there for us. And, you know, employers tend to hang their hat way too much on that and believe that they're flighty or they don't know what, I love what you say. They don't know what they want to be when they grow up. But as you were talking, here's what popped in my mind, how to create long-term employees. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it's a lot of work and it's annoying, but as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, we signed up for that. That's kind of in our contract that we're going to create a business and we are going to create a business where we are going to employ people and we are going to grow people up. And we are going to invest in our clients, our referral source, our community, and the people that um, are involved in our business. So it's almost like it's our duty to do that it was popping in my head. And as you were talking, here's what really came to me. I think how you create long-term employees and why sometimes we don't want to invest in people for various reasons if they don't have the skill set or the pr precise experience or years of experience, what have you, um, whatever our story and our stuff and our garbage is that we come with that. But as you were talking, this is what came to me, Christian, I love your insight on this. I think sometimes the reason people don't want to pour in and invest and mentor people, and they have this belief system um, that people that come with batteries included they won't have to train them, invest in them, coach in them, have conversations in them. I think subconsciously, and I'll even speak for myself because I know myself that sometimes it's because I don't have the clarity or I don't have the know-how of what it is for this position or whether it's newly created or what I really want to carry out my vision, my goals, my dreams and things of that nature. So as you were talking, I'm like, I think it's a beautiful way for employee retention, branding, all the things that you said, but also when you shift your mindset to really have a mentorship, mentorship is a new leadership, love that that it caught it's 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 like a two for one if you will the benefit for you as an entrepreneur is it causes you to the power of the pause to get really still and clear and i love the word that you the two words that you put together strategic membership mentorship because at the end of the day it causes you to get really clear on your vision and your strategy what are your thoughts on that well, it's something that you just said at the very beginning there, and I, I just want to, I'd be curious. So you, you, you said, and, and help me if I'm, if I'm clear on this, that, um, that as entrepreneurs, you know, we start business because we want to, to grow people, to employ people. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I would say that's, that's the secondary thing. Um, you started a business. We became, we became entrepreneurs because we were inspired by something first. And it was because we were inspired by a vision, then we took the steps of building, scaling, growing, and hiring others. And so it's because that we were inspired first by, by solving something, by imagining a world that has yet to become, by imagining a series of, you know, a state of being for ourselves or other people that uh, is not yet into come into fruition. It's because of that vision that we started and do what we do. And so in order for you to be successful and, and to hire people and do that, you need to sell them on that vision too. And if you can't sell them on that vision, that's, that's kind of the first problem. Once you are able to sell them on that vision, then there you go. That's the first step. And so that, that's the clarity that you just mentioned, right? Mm. Um, the, the other thing is, so I mentioned that, that 30% and 70%, right? 30% yeah. of people are driven in their careers by a purpose. And then 70% are for, uh, either remuneration or other, uh, in, in the, uh, organizational behavior literature, we call it hygienic factors, which are environmental factors. Um, today purpose really has a strong currency, uh, in, in the market and the job market. And when you, you know, communicate, you have a purpose that's going to really go a long ways. But if you can't communicate your vision 
of what that world looks like that you're trying to create, what those problems look like that you're trying to solve, what those people experience or feel or look like when they're having their issues resolved because of what you do, then you are just saying to you know the prospective hires, well, we're one of the 70% of people who just do this because it, you know, it, it turns a buck. Um, people want to have purpose in their lives. And so when you show yourself as one of those 30% purpose-driven employers, uh, then all of a sudden you're a lot more attractive um, you know, to, to prospective hires. And yeah, so, so mentorship, it really is uh, an opportunity to, to share that vision and to sell and catch people on that. Um, just as an aside, my, my family runs a Mexican restaurant in Los Angeles. And uh, so I you know, grew up working in a Mexican restaurant and love it. And my uncle is an absolute genius at getting people to catch the vision of what uh, can be possible. You know, he started a restaurant because he loves uh, having the, the floor of the restaurant being a fun place for families to come and, and to have just a great time with food. And so that's the foundation. That's the vision. It's not, let's get, you know, 200 plates out this evening, or let's get, you know, this much profitability. He hires people on the vision first. And it's that vision of, we are here to create an unparalleled, just really fun environment for people to have a great meal in. That's what gets employees. And that's what keeps the employees there. Mm, wow. And that's what keeps the employees there. And that's the thing that I really want everybody to hear today. When you, that's what you tell us. You don't want to pour into people just to have them leave, train them. We all know the costs. We've seen all the statistics in, in regards to that. But so often people forget that it's a relationship, right? And so if you have the mindset that you don't have time for fill in the blank to train them to what have you, it's a relationship. And why do, why, why do relationships end? Because of lack of time, attention, feedback, and connection. And so if you want long-term employees, I hope what you're taking away from what Kristen's sharing here today is now more than ever you have to shift your mindset in regards to having a strategic mentorship business, in regards to being very clear and connected to your passion, to your purpose, and to really understand and to understand as an entrepreneur, to own a business, it's not just about building a business, you have to build people especially for all of us are in the personal service industry, i.e. relationship industry, and you build people and then people build your business. And that's what you really have to understand in regards to shifting your mindset that if you want long-term employees, right, Christian? Absolutely. Well, I, I'm just thinking about a, a, one of my favorite quotes from John Wooden, the acclaimed and famous legendary UCLA basketball coach. He said, if you don't have time to do it right, when will you have time to do it over? Mm. And right. It's a great, it's a great one. And, and I mentioned this, it's a, a chapter about how putting on socks uh, correctly changed the career path for the great basketball star Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Uh, and it's in chapter six in my book. Um, but the, the concept of, you know, doing it quick uh, isn't doing it right. And if we're just not doing it right, then when, when are we going to have time to do it over? And I think this happens a lot, uh, again, when we're building people. Um, as we mentioned in, in, my, in the first discussion, uh, you know, when people walk in the door, the first people that they encounter are your front desk staff, right? If your front desk staff and if you're the, the employees who greet and handle the onboarding of, of clients aren't, if they don't buy into your mission and what you're doing and the vision of what you're trying to create, then, I mean, they are your very first brand ambassadors. Then how on earth will a customer or client ever become a brand ambassador for you? So again, that, that, that mentorship it, it really does have trickle down benefits uh, because if they love their job, if they love working, you know, for you guys, then the moment that, and uh, you know, a client walks in, I mean, you've been in places, right. Where you could tell that everybody was just there because they had to be there. 
And then you've been in places also where you could tell that the employees genuinely enjoyed feeling that, you know, feeling fulfilled, that they're in the right place. And all of that turned into a great customer experience. Whereas if the employees are simply there because they have to, and they have no other options and they're looking for the exit, then that's going to really impact the ratings and reviews and the experience that your clients have. So it, it's, again, the strategic mentorship. And like I said, men, as I agree, mentorship is the new leadership. Um, that is the way to really uh, create a workforce and a team that's going to deliver time and time again, an unparalleled experience for prospective clients. And that will in turn, turn them into referral generating, uh, you know, ambassadors for the rest of their lives. Referral generating ambassadors for the rest of their life. Absolutely. Do you all think, you all know one of my greatest weapons, my secret weapon that I have in my recruiting uh, bag is when I'm talking to candidates and trying to sell them on hopping on a Zoom interview with my law firms. And I'll say to them, listen, they have a coaching environment. They invest in personal professional development, have quarterly strategic retreats. Uh, we have an onboard a coach that is working with the firm consistently. We believe in employee and team empowerment. And those are the candidates that'll take a job and take a $20,000 pay cut for that because they want to be part of something. And they understand that leaders are out front, they're up front, and they see the value within their employees. So if there's nothing else that you take away from, and, and you have to burn the boats on this statement of, I don't have time. I can't tell you how many times a day. And I love that quote that you just referenced as well. How many times a day I hear that from attorneys? It's not from employees. It's from the entrepreneur. And you really, that's the greatest. It's a first rock that needs to go in is that mentorship and coaching. Yeah, no, I mean, think how much does it cost to to go hire and bring somebody on? Um, and mentorship will reduce that cost, uh, undoubtedly. Uh, if you, and if you're mentoring people, then they're going to stay on and you're going to have less turnover and that, then that's really more cost. So I guess what what costs more, um, you know, to, to take some time to train, to encourage, to motivate and to inspire or to just completely start from scratch and rehire, you know? Uh, so that, that's a huge, a huge challenge. It isn't the, the cost of doing it. It's the, what's the cost of not doing it that, that we often need to think about. One of the, one of the conversation tricks that I, I skills that I, I use when I'm trying to uh, position myself as a mentor uh, to somebody, whether I'm, I'm onboarding you know, uh, uh, a student whose parents reached out to me and I'm, I'm trying to win over the student or maybe uh, a colleague uh, referenced one of their colleagues to work with me for the one-on-one -on -one career coaching and the person's kind of skeptical and I need to win them over. Uh, one of the, the phrases I use is, uh, uh, can I help raise your game? In this next conversation, uh, you know, over the next 20 minutes, my goal is I want to help raise your game. Are you open to that? And automatically, I have never had a person say no. <laughs> I've never had a person say no to, <laughs> can I help raise your game? Because they all want to feel that. And then when you offer to raise their game, then you need to deliver a paradigm shift. And when you do that, you are automatically building in them an expectation that, wow, this person's going to help, help me think more strategically. And I want to learn how to think more strategically. This is the type of person I want to associate with more. Um, again, that phrase, um, are, you, can, are you willing to, or can I uh, help raise, are you willing to let me raise your game and then deliver a paradigm shift, help them look at the world in a completely different way. And then that is when you will win them over. And that, okay. All right. So for the listeners that don't like the term mentorship, and what have you. I love that question in regards to helping somebody up level, helping somebody raise their game to, um, to be lifted. Paradigm shift, that's a term that people were all crazy about in the early 90s, what have you. So in regards to that, 
if you're offering that up, that's your superpower. That's your super weapon to get somebody to take your job and to stay at your job. And then that right there, I love that, that you use the word paradigm shift. And I absolutely love that question because in a nutshell, that's mentorship, but you have to practice what you preach and it has to be consistent and persistent within the fabric and the, every fiber within your culture. And when you, as you're talking, remind me, I had a firm that called me yesterday and gosh, they're so old school. I did not take them on as a client because the whole time they're the a type of person, if I would have asked that question, they would have said no, um, that, but they told me about how horrible employees are in, in quote unquote, in this day and age. And I had two paralegals, one that walked out, just gave me one week notice and they walked out. And then another one who completely walked out and didn't even give me notice. I'm like, Hmm, what's the common denominator here? And I did ask that question. I'm like, well, at that point when, and they told me about all the turnover they've had because people don't want to work anymore and blah, blah, blah. They just want to sit home and collect unemployment, which is not my experience at all. Um, and the going on and on. And I'm like, what do you see as possibly the common denominator? What I'm hearing from you is I tell me a little bit about your culture. Well, you know what their question was? What do you mean by culture? <laughs> they didn't even. Ah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Right. So, I mean, I can't tell you what would you say? I, I, I mean, it, the, you have to stop saying that it's bad employees and, and take a look at yourself. Right. I mean, the, the there's, there's transactional relationships and that there's transactional leadership. Uh, again, I, uh, at my master's degree at the London School of Economics, I really enjoyed studying the theories of leadership and, and uh, understanding more. How do leaders build consensus and lead groups of people to create and affect change? And one of the, the most easy and reliable forms of leadership that we've always experienced is this transactional form of leadership where, well, you know, I, I you know, you do something, I do something. It's, it's a, you know, quid pro quo kind of a, you know, way to approach things. And that just doesn't cut it anymore. Uh, it just doesn't work because you have a workforce that is searching for purpose and meaning. So it's not that people don't want to work. It's that they may not want to work for you. And that's the Ooh. question that you have to start to think about. Oh, that's uh, you good. Know? And that, that takes, you have to, that's a hard look in the mirror, right? Um, but the, the, the great thing is, is that um, everything that I've studied about leadership and influence is that leadership and influence is not a, a static set of way of being. Leadership is a skill set. Influence is a skill set. And skill sets can be learned, practiced, improved, developed, and, and you know, improved over time. So uh, this is, if anything, if that's the you know, experience at your workplace, then there's an opportunity to look at the mirror, ask some searching questions, but there's a lot of opportunities for coaching. There's so many experts out there who can help you look and understand and evaluate the culture, but more importantly, the, the questions that you ask of, you know, how, what is the vision that people are, are rallying behind? Why should they show up to work for you? So again, people want to work, but sometimes they, they may not want to work for you. And that's something that we, we, we have to, to kind of look at carefully. <laughs> oh, I'd love that. Christian, tell our listeners how they can learn more about what you are, because uh, many of our listeners have uh, children that are either approaching college age. Tell us a little bit about your, that. I'm very intrigued and in how people can learn out, learn more about it. Absolutely. Um, so uh, yeah, I have, I, I do a lot of different types of coaching. I, you know, I help with career seekers who are trying to make a shift in their careers. Uh, I, I help with businesses who are trying to, you know, improve the influence in their work, the workspace, but also when I work with students, and this is a side, another side business that I do, um, it, it all boils down to this. I, when I work with students, I, I've sat across the desk from too many students who all they ever learned how to do was simply get into college but they never figured out why they were going in the first place. And so uh, they, they go to college and they have this set of beliefs and ways of approaching it that are quite actually unhelpful. 
uh, and they find out that life isn't about ACT scores or SAT scores and how many kittens you've rescued from trees uh, and you know what your brag sheet looks like, but rather they, I want students and I help them to figure this out. Uh, instead of why are they going to school, I want my students to figure out why are they hiring this school? And when a student is able to sit and, and explicitly say, I am hiring this university so that I can do X, Y, Z, that changes not only the course of the student's life, but also it really makes their application stand out. Um, people are welcome to reach out to me via LinkedIn uh, and also check out my website, thechristianhanson.com. Uh, and and you know, my, the Influence Mindset, I have a whole book bonus of additional content that after they read the book, they can access it and get some more information there as well. So uh, yeah, I just, I help students and young people. I approach it from a mentoring position where I'm here to raise their game. If all I do is simply help young people learn how to write clever, witty essays, ultimately I will have failed them. Rather, I wanna provide paradigm shifts, not just for the students, but for their parents as well. That's going to empower them to be influential and build a life of productivity, power, and influence uh, for the rest of their lives. Oh, that, that's a mission statement right there. That is beautiful. Wow. Well, Christian, thank you for coming back and being our guest. And again, listeners, we are going to have in the show notes, how to order Christian's book. We're going to have his website in addition to LinkedIn contact, all the goodies in regards to how to stay connected with the influence mindset, the art and science of getting people to choose you in addition to Christian and the amazing work that he's doing with today's youth. Uh, just, I can tell you, um, you know, having college age student, uh, very, very grateful for people in the industry such as yourself. Um, prior to finding you, my son, I had a, a coach. He's had a coach since he's been in seventh grade. And I, 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 none of his success would be possible without that. I, many of our listeners know I am a huge proponent of coaching at, for your employees, for yourself, for your family, what have you, because I believe that's what keeps you consistent, persistent, and on a path of growth. And I love the new term that we have today, which is strategic mentorship and bringing back a paradigm shifts. There's a book, gosh, that a psychologist wrote that was brought to the estate planning industry. We used to bring them in for um, keynotes way back when. I'm going to have to dig that out and um, and bring it alive again. Maybe we'll bring it back again, Christian, talk about paradigm shifts. Sure thing. Happy to. Thank you so much. All right, listeners, that's a wrap. Until next time, keep up the good work and strategic mentorship. If nothing else, if you can take away from today's podcast, the importance of that, the relevancy of that, if you want to create long-term employees, in addition to consistently attracting new employees and to hone in on your mission, your person, your purpose, your passion, in addition to your branding. I love that you brought that in today, Christian. Thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure. We've reached the end of another impactful conversation on the Higher and Empower podcast. Whether this was your first episode or you're a longtime listener, I know you can tell I have passion for people. Whether you're a business owner, employee, executive, or hiring manager, I understand the situation you're in. Hiring, onboarding, and leadership is expensive, exhausting, overwhelming, and if that's not enough, it's also time consuming. My friends, it doesn't have to be this way. There is a team at H&E that has your back. For over 25 years, they've transformed over 4,000 law firms into efficient, effective, profitable assets for their business and made it fun to come to work again. Check out our Smart Hire Solution, our employee leadership program, and the 66-day law firm turnaround at hiringandempowering.com.